In this video, we're going to look at how to find exact trig values without a calculator and without our little yellow card. Um, so you could memorize the whole unit circle. Um, I should pick X here because I do not recommend that. Um, if you already have it memorized, great. But if you mess up, then you're going to add a lot. Um, uh, another way to do this is by using the special right triangles. Um, so these are isosceles. These measures are exactly the same. Hopefully um, that one's not too bad. The other one, um, I have it memorized maybe in a little bit different way. Um, it's just easy for me to remember one, two, three. Um, the three has to be right beside the 30 degree angle. And obviously it cannot be longer than the hypotenuse. So we had to make it smaller by taking the radical. Um, you may be more familiar with this triangle in a different form. If I divide everything by two, I've created a similar triangle that has exactly the same trig ratio. And that's what we're finding is trig. Um, so if I compute opposite over hypotenuse, if I use these fractions, I'll get exactly the same answer as if I just use one and two. Um, so I find this one easy. You can use any version you have memorized. So unit means one, so the unit circle has a radius of one. If you're looking at um, a value on an axis, remember that the coordinates are going to involve a one. Um, the hypotenuse is always positive um, in the special, or I'm sorry, in the unit circle. And ordered pairs go in the order cosine sine. Just remember it's alphabetical. Okay. Um, so we have four quadrants. Um, pi is equal to 180 degrees. So this is pi. If I'm looking for pi divided by 2, I just take that distance and divide it in half. Um, if I want 3 pi over 2s, I just go that distance 1, 2, 3 times. Um, and then if I'm asking you any of those values, you can just use these coordinates to determine the cosine and the sine. Um, so those are, if it's any multiple of pi over 2, the easiest way is just to use these, um, the unit circle rather than a triangle. Um, for everything else, you're going to want to fit an appropriate special right triangle. And it's really important that you understand the way we fit these in is that our reference angle has to go right here at the origin. So any triangle you fit in here has to make this bow tie shape. Um, if you fit a triangle into quadrant 3, um, it, the right angle has to be away from the origin. Um, so please don't try to be using special right triangles like this. Um, that is not going to give you the right answer. So just remember the rules for uh, Sokotoa. And then here's your steps. I'm not going to read all of these to you, um, but we do use radians in calculus. Um, we shouldn't actually have to do this because hopefully um, it'll be a little bit more common sense. But uh, we're going to use the appropriate right triangle. Um, just make sure you're paying attention to what quadrant you're in um, so that you know which ones are negative um, or not. So example one, it's asking us to compute the sine of 4 pi over 3. I like to look at this as pi over 3, and I'm going to have four of those. So if I took pi and I divided it into three pieces, this is kind of what I would get. And so since I do that four times, I go 1, 2, 3, 4. So this has created that special right triangle. Um, and then since that was pi over 3, which was a 60 degree angle, I know this is my 1, 2, 3 triangle. So this has to be 30. My 3 has to be beside the 30. i got to make it smaller because the hypotenuse has to be the longest side. And since I'm in quadrant 3, anything to the left of the y-axis is negative, and any value down is negative. And now I just need to find the sign of that. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So for this angle, I'm going to have opposite over hypotenuse. So negative radical 3 over 2. Um, we'll do the same thing to 3 pi over 4. Again, we need pi over 4, and we're going to look at that three times. So there's 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4. And pi over 4 is 45 degrees. Okay. Remember, this is just 180, so that's 180 divided in half twice. Um, so this special right triangle is radical 2 over 2. And since we're backwards, it's negative. But since this goes up, it's actually positive. Um, so we're going to use this triangle. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. 
So the adjacent side is going to be negative radical 2 over 2. And the hypotenuse is here is 1. So I'm going to put that all over 1, which is just negative radical 2 all over 2. Um, so we'll just do a couple more examples. Um, the sine of pi over 3, again, this is the same as 180. So if I change that to 180, I just get a 60 degree angle. So this is my 30, 60, 90. So I need 1, 2, 3. I'm going to make that smaller and my hypotenuse is the longest side. Everything's positive in quadrant 1. Sine has the ratio opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite side is radical 3, hypotenuse is 2. And we'll do one more. We'll do the sine of 7 pi over 4. Um, so again, pi over 4 is half of each quadrant. So we'll do that 7 times, starting at 0 here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this is my 45, 45, 90, which means my side lengths are radical 2 over 2, and my hypotenuse is 1. This one's going to be negative because we're going down below the x-axis. And the sine, again, is opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite of this reference angle is negative radical 2 over 2. And the hypotenuse is 1. 